Well, ladies and gentlemen, we proceed further with our next topic, uh, which is uh, democratizing AI for your growth limited. And uh, the speaker for the same is uh, the National Technology Officer, Microsoft India, Dr. Rohini Srivastava. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together as I welcome Dr. Rohini Srivastava on stage. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think after the last session, which I was also listening to, it was a very exciting one. Um, let me take this opportunity to uh, share with you uh, my excitement about uh, the world of AI. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard about AI in the media. There is a lot of discussion happening. Um, the particular uh, take that I want to take, uh, want to uh, want to follow today, is to bring to you how AI can be in your hands to power your growth. And I'm hoping that in 20 minutes, you will be able to uh, hopefully share some of my excitement for this space. Let me just start with a video. I was hoping through this video to, uh, to give you a little bit of a sense for how AI is uh, not a buzzword anymore. It is part of our everyday lives. And uh, how it is, as a technology, going to become something that we don't think about every day. What I mean by that is, today, if you look at electricity and you turn on a switch, you don't think about where that electricity has come from. You don't think about where it was manufactured, how it came to you. You expect the light to turn on. Very soon, AI will be something that will become subsumed. You will expect things around you. You, ex you would expect experiences. You would expect uh, uh, products. You will expect exp uh, the, the technology you work with to be intelligent. That's how it's going to become part of our lives. And one of the things that Satya talks about this, uh, this statement, which, uh, which, is, as, which is an important one, and I want to use that to, to set up the stage for my next uh, uh, conversation, is that, and this is something other leaders have also said, that it is not just another piece of technology. It is one of the most fundamental pieces that, of technology that the human race has invented. And that makes us, as an organization, think about really what is the role we want to play in this world, given that AI is going to be around us and in every part of our lives. So in our view, when I think about the, the vision that we have, or the way we think about it is this, this is not just about businesses. It's actually about every developer. We are a technology company. Developers are our primary stakeholders. We work for them. We work with them. Um, it is about empowering every organization, and it is beyond business. It is empowering every human being, every person on the planet to transform society. I want to use this to, uh, to just paint a little bit picture about why we think this way. And hopefully, you will see pla places, which I will draw upon, where you see the role that you want to play in this vision. I spent a long time, I would say, I was talking to some people. I've spent almost two and a half, three decades in the space of AI. I was working on neural networks in the very early 90s. Now the, the data and compute has come to a place where this is real. And Microsoft, uh, for the last 25 odd years, has been investing in, in uh, research. And over the last two or three years, if you've been following this space, many of the capabilities that AI is able to do in terms of object recognition, in terms of speech recognition, uh, reading comprehension, these are reach, reaching human parity. What that means is that they are doing accuracy and they are able to perform at the level of a human being. That should make us pause and think, what does that mean? And what we are doing is saying, yes, these are these interesting, uh, 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 um, uh, humongous uh, um, innovations that are coming out of our labs, but how do we make them available to our developers to be able to take that innovation and do, do new things? The kind of thing that I'll talk about um, are around using um, Microsoft Cognitive Services to create um, new experiences, creating bots, creating digital agents. So a lot of the innovation that we are doing in our labs, we are putting it out there 
uh, not just as innovation that we can talk about in the media, but as something that developers and small organizations and even students can use it and leverage that innovation uh, as part of a platform. We've always been a platform company. We've always been a company that is providing the tools and techniques and the platform for people to innovate. And this is no different. So with the AI coming in, it was earlier .NET, then the cloud, and now with AI, there are infrastructure, there are services, and there are tools that are available for organization of any size to be able to go in and disrupt their industry. This to me is a very, is this audience, I think, is, is primed to be able to think about this, what does this mean? Even a few years back, to be able to do something that required object recognition or facial recognition would have required you to have compute resources, algorithms, and expertise that you could not have thought about. Today, that's a click away. That's a click away in the cloud. And which is why some of the larger organizations, if you look at any financial services company or any company, when they look at their product portfolio, they're able to see startups and small organizations which are able to leapfrog because of the cloud, because of availability of these tools as a platform to disrupt their business model. Because they are stuck with their legacy. Whereas people are able to come and create experiences that are at a different level. And the, the barrier to entry has disappeared. To me, that's a huge opportunity for this audience. The kind of things you can do, right? Kind of things you can do is, for example, vision, right? You're looking at a picture, and what the example here is saying is that the, the machine is able to see the picture and say, who are in the, who's on this, in this picture? What kind of content do you have? So for example, in this, in, in this, in this uh, slide, uh, what the person is doing is showing their five faces, and there's no uh, adult content. So it is checking for that. The machine is doing that. Similarly, speech to text, like I mentioned, that has also reached human parity. So you're able to do things like have a conversational interface, be able to talk to your application, talk to your offering. Same way, natural language processing. So each of these areas, there is a ton, decades and decades of research that has gone behind. And what the platform is doing, it's training and creating APIs so you have something that is almost half cooked. It's like you know, ready off the shelf pizza that you want to have already has the toppings and you want to bring in and put what you like, customize it on your data, on your particular preferences and bake it. So the time to market, to take any of these things, whether it's with vision, whether it is speech, whether it's language, uh, knowledge mining, search, this is changing. And expectations are going to be from customers that you're no longer doing a search and trying to look for keywords, that's gone. You want to be able to find information based on the context. Think about this. Play today, today's customer call recording. There are multiple contexts here. There's a customer call. There is today is a context. And play. You know, many of us have kids. Today, if you look, give a kid a mouse and a computer, you will notice they don't know what to do with a mouse. They actually don't know. Some of us grew with a keyboard. <laughs> Right? And when the mouse came, we kind of figured out, are today's kids, you give them a mouse, they don't know what to do, they start touching the screen. Just a few years later, they will not know what to touch because they'll want to talk to the device. It's not, it's not far away. They will want to talk to the device, they'll want the device to, un the, the whatever uh, offering is, they want that to understand their context, understand what they're looking for, where they're coming from, where they are, who they are. That is going to become the new normal. And the small organizations have the ability, the agility, to move fast and grab these things because the barriers to entry have gone down. You no longer need a huge team of data scientists and machine learning experts and PhDs to do this stuff. That's gone. So I talked about the developer side of it. Um, continuing on the whole vision thought, uh, Again, uh, from, a, from a broader perspective, we want to empower organizations. We are, we are not going to develop everything ourselves because this is not a technology per se. It is a momentous time for the human race. It is actually that big. 
right? So what we do is our thought is to be able to bring that intelligence, the ability to create, a, create intelligence into every application, into every business process, into to the hands of every employee. And how are we going to do that? I spoke a little bit about the, the developer side. That also brings in to say that if you are an organization, you have some applications which have been developed custom. You have developed them yourself. You understand them. They have been developed specifically for you. There are, there are some off-the-shelf applications. How do you make sure that every application can be now enhanced to be more intelligent, to be more contextual, to create new experiences? That is what we're talking about. And when we talk about business processes, we all know that when technology came, when the internet came, business processes have gone through radical changes in terms of being digital, in terms of being seamless. What this is doing is saying that, can I now change the way in which I sell? Can I now change the way in which I, uh, uh, I interact with my customers? Can I change the way in which I hire? Each of those spaces are getting disrupted with the way intelligence is getting built into applications. And we are doing that with our products, which I'll talk about a little bit. But the invitation is that if you have something in your organization which has been developed, the ability to add intelligence to it is radically, the, the, the path has become radically shortened. Same way if you go down the businesses, business processes or specific industries. Again, you think about how to look at um, making prop marketing offers, or how do you look at, look at creating more personalization? So in every industry, you will see the way business processes are changing. I will stay, keep moving here. Uh, and same way as the, every employee. Today, if you go to employees, at least in large organizations, and I'm sure in the small organizations, that is also true, that there are silos. People are, people are constrained with how they are able to collaborate, how well they are able to have intelligent interactions with each other and with, with IT. That is also going to change. And the way they are doing it, and I'll draw a few examples, is just as I initially mentioned that every product, every experience, every interaction will become intelligent to a point where you will no longer think about AI as a separate entity. It will be in the background. You won't think about it. In the same way, what we are doing is, for example, we are bringing in intelligence into the Microsoft suite of products, whether it is Office 365, which is for the employee productivity, whether it is a Dynamics suite, which is for business processes, and I mentioned the cloud. And cloud, to me, is a great disruptor, which allows small, medium businesses to enter any segment, and that barrier to entry has gone. So the kind of examples, for example, we are bringing in, right? When I talked initially about innovations in machine translation, which is now reaching human parity, we are building that into some of the office products. So if you look at, for example, PowerPoint, and you see you can directly do translation right on the fly. Same way, image recognition. Some of these technologies are getting built into uh, our products because to us, if we don't do that, we are not eating our own uh, cake. That is important that our, our products are keeping up, whether it is Teams, you look at Teams in the facial recognition, um, whether it is, uh, it is it's dynamics in terms of customer analytics, uh, many of that is getting built in. I spoke about the organizational imperative or the ability to transform organizations, industries, whether it is a small organization or a large organization. And to my first comment, um, AI is about it's bigger than organizations. It's bigger than, uh, than, than an individual company. It's about society. It's about, uh, it's about the human race. And what we see, and some of you, if you are following, as machines are getting uh, more and more empowered, and some of these algorithms are getting human parity, there are clearly issues that are also emerging. And you might have seen about hidden biases, for example. Hidden biases in terms of, let's say, gender or race. There are issues of that kind also raising. And the issue is that should we stop and not adopt AI? I don't think that's a, that's a choice. The world is moving in that direction. The only choice we have, can we do this by taking the ethical challenges heads on, head on? And there are challenges around fairness, around accountability, around inclusivity, biases. And we, as an organization, have actually uh, a specific committee and a whole governance structure to be able to address these as an organization with, as you work with our clients. And beyond the ethical aspect of it, 
The final thing I would say is which, which is extremely exciting that we think about, as I mentioned, that this is about beyond business and organization. There is a larger world out there. Whenever I hear about some great breakthrough in, in AI, to me the question, big question becomes, what do I do about the poverty I see out there? What do I do about the real problem I see out there? In terms of whether it's in terms of accessibility, there's a, there are a billion people in the world who are differently enabled. What are we doing to make sure that they have access to the same resources, the same technology, the same uh, capabilities that you and I have who are gifted, in other words? Same way for, uh, for the, for the uh, things around, sustain, around environmental issues, around uh, water. So there are many things that are, uh, are going on within Microsoft, uh, working with our partners, working with the United Nations and many organizations that we are working in the areas on, uh, on Earth, on humanitarian action. So to, to us, the, 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 the vision point is that this is, this is bigger than business. This is, this is about us as a, as a planet. So I'll just leave with the final thought that, uh, reiterating the point that our mission has always been and continues to be uh, empowering every person and every planet to do more. Uh, and I'm happy to take a couple of questions if there are. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, your expression seems that you're wondering for questions. I'm sure there will be many questions regarding this topic, but that we're going to take off stage. Okay. <laughs> but right. Thank you so much for sure. that. Please stay back because I'm going to call, invite on stage Mr. Vinod BC, MD CSIM Software uh, Chair, NASCOM SME Kerala. So if you could kindly come on stage and felicitate ma'am. Can we thank have you. a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Dr. Oh, wow. Rohini Shrivastava?